Aloha, welcome, I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. And today we are going to celebrate and honor Jerry Land, our beloved queen. Jerry Land's Bay Area media legend, social activist, educator, and author. Our beloved Jerry Lange, one of the first African-American journalists and television talk show hosts in the San Francisco area, passed away peacefully on April 10th, 2021 from natural causes. At 96, despite several physical challenges, Jerry remained positive and powerful force and continued to share her wisdom and experiences with her vast circle of friends, family, and admirers. Jerry is survived by her two sons, James Cohen, a print media businessman, and Ted Lange, a playwright and actor best known for his stellar performance on Isaac, as Isaac on the hit television series, The Love Boat. Along with Ted's two sons, Jerry's grandson, TV4, and Turner, Ted Four and Turner, Jerry joins her son, the late Michael Lange, a playwright, actor, and professor in heaven. Jerry was an award-winning journalist who from 1969 to 1979 hosted community-based television shows in the Bay Area, where she became the first black woman to host a national talk show, Turnabout, and where she served on the board Jerry interviewed so many television legends, Rock Hudson, Maya Angelou, Sammy Davis Jr., and so many, many more. And she used her passion to empower people, especially young Black Americans. And I am so thrilled to have a group here from the Bay Area who, are, they're going to talk about the Jerry Lange experience. Welcome to Sister Power. Thank you, Sharon. Welcome. You know, I'm going to start with you, Barbara. You know, we were speaking earlier. You are the founder and executive director. Well, that's, that is um, D, but I'm going to start with Barbara because last year you were, well, last year I met Juliana Richardson and she is the founding executive director at the History Makers. Now you have received numerous honors for your community mm -hmm. service and your life was added to the National Archive of African-American Oral Histories being collected by the history makers. Congratulations and welcome, Barbara. Thank you, thank you. I, I was so honored when um, they called me and said they wanted to add my story. And then a uh, year before last, they sent me um, notice very nicely done like a engraved look like a wedding invitation but it was really to say that I had been chosen as one of the bios biographies that would be permanently housed in the Library of Congress. I started to cry because, you know, I grew up very poor in Tennessee during segregation, and I just wished that my parents were still alive to see that their little girl was going to be permanently housed in the Library of Congress in Washington, yeah. D.C. is one of those kinds of things that you just don't expect is ever going to happen when you're growing up the way I grew up. And uh -huh. I think uh, when I met Jerry, I saw that same kind of spirit in her. Um, I did not ever get to see her when she was doing her regular programs because she finished in 79. And that's when I came to the Bay Area in 1979 to work for the CBS station KPIX TV. So I met her out and about in the community where she was all the time. But I really met her sons before I met her and didn't link the two until much later. But she was always so much fun to meet out and about because she was so energetic, you know, and I knew she was older than I was, but I didn't know how much older because she had the same level of energy so it was hard to tell she was sort of one of those ageless women you know you really never went when she died and I and they said she was 96 I was really shocked because I didn't actually know she was that and she was 96 I I was kind of thinking she was 80 something and uh so I, you know it was just it was just wonderful to meet her and to talk with her she had had so many interesting experiences and knew so many interesting people and had traveled. And I am really one of those people who loves to travel. So we had a lot in common. Oh, good. 
did you feel that there were some similarities between Jerry's life and yours? Oh, yes. In addition to what I was saying about how I grew up and then never quite expecting that that was where I was going to wind up in the Library of Congress. One of the other similarities was that I recognized about her very early on is that she was a risk taker. And she wasn't afraid to confront, to speak as, as Barbara, as Congresswoman Barbara Lee likes to say, speak truth to power. And, um, and she also was a visionary. You know, she sort of saw things ahead. And when I was very young, when Robert Kennedy was running for president of the United States, and he used that quote, you know, some people see things as they are and say why I see things as they could be and ask why not. That really resonated with me. I think I was in ninth grade when that happened, mm -hmm. ninth or 10th grade. And I always sort of was like that too, where I looked ahead. When we were in ninth grade, we had to do career scrapbooks. And at that time, I did not know I was going to get to go to college because my parents had no money to send me to college. So I did my career scrapbook on becoming a secretary, which is what I thought I was going to do because I would be able to take typing and shorthand in high school. But it was interesting. On the, My mother had saved everything, and I didn't even remember I had done this. But on the front page of my career book, now I was only 14. I had found a quote in a magazine that said, what man has done, man can do, and these days, so can women too. So wow. I was a feminist before I even knew the word. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I mean, just that's amazing that that spoke to me at age 14, okay. uh, that quote, and I put it on the very first page of the, of the book. So, you know, you never know what's, what lies ahead. I mean, I had wow. no idea the life I was going to be living 50 years later. But that quote said something about what was in my head even before I knew what to call it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're here celebrating Jerry, a Black woman's life in the media. And I'm going to come to you, Dee, you know, founder and executive director of the Lend a Hand Foundation, widely known for providing low income, at risk students with school supplies during the year. Your organization supplies during. Your organization has provided over 98,000 school supplies bags to children and youth. That's a, that is awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And wow. thank you for having me on the show. I'm just so in awe when I got the call from Carmen and just been waiting to hear what we were gonna do about our dear Jerry. And she said, well, here's an opportunity for us to come together and just speak some of her truth and just how amazing she was and the fact that when she first met me she just took to me and she wanted to know who I was and for me I was just Dee Johnson graduated from a climate high school that's all and <laughs> <laughs> but she saw something in me and she just encouraged me and I just will never forget her. She's an amazing woman. I was just reading an, uh, part of an anthology that she did, and it talked about, I know it had to be probably 2015 or so, maybe 2016, and she talks about how we could make the change in the world. If we have time, I'd like to read a little bit of that. Okay, we're going to make we're gonna make so powerful. Time. Yes. Okay, we're going to make Thank time you. because, you know, Jerry was such an instrumental woman when it comes to organizations that give back. Mm -hmm. She came out here and helped me with the Hawaii Valentine's Day for veterans. And she was my speaker and the veterans were just, they were she so She told me excited. about that too. Yeah, she they were so about, excited. Yeah. So I want to ask you, Dee, mm -hmm. what do you remember mm -hmm. most about Jerry? Her passion, her energy, as they all say, and her loving to dance and, and love life. And she often talked about making sure when you're speaking, speak positive, put out the positive, keep out the negative. If you keep the positive going, then that's when the positive things will continue to be in your life. And if people put out love, that will just take care of everything. Wow. You know, and she lived on a street named Alice. Alice. Mm -hmm. And that was my mother's name. Really? And I understand, I, I just got to fall in love with her all over again. <laughs> she, she became my second mom. I, I lost my mom, you know, you know, 15, 10 years ago. But there's a mural 
uh, Carmen, right. I think you sent me that. Jerry is on that mural. Oh my gosh, that is just <laughs> such an honor, an honor for that. So Carmen, I'm gonna come to you again. Thank you for putting this um, panel together. You know, you're a public relations consultant and document design and specialist who works with many large corporations and organizations. You help to design programs and beautiful documents from Jerry Lynch for many special events. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. I love doing events. So I want to know from you, Carmen, mm -hmm. you know, how does she inspire you? Wow. Um, just like everybody said, Jerry inspired me with her level of energy. Um, I used to tell friends that this beautiful woman would run circles around a 40 year old, you know, um, that she had such a, a wealth of information and experiences. Um, when I first met Jerry, I was at the um, uh, Black History event, uh, KPIX. This was 2011. Her son, Michael, brought me over and she was sitting there with her book, Jerry, A Black Woman's Life in the Media. And that was inspirational right there. Um, but as I got to talking with her, it just kind of felt like we had known each other forever. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And I thought maybe I was like a really special person because right. I was having this connection with her. And then I actually came to find out that Jerry has this type of connection or mm -hmm. had this type of connection with pretty much everybody that came into her circle. Um, she was just a, a very loving, brilliant woman who just loved to share her information. Um, one of the things that stood out for me about Jerry is that she had had some really hard knocks in her life. She um, had a few job opportunities that just kind of went south, did not pan out, uh, but she never let that discourage her. She just kept herself together and it seemed as if when one job didn't work, the phone rang for Jerry, uh, miraculously. And there was another opportunity even better than the last one. Um, and that just was really something that um, it stuck to me because I had similar experiences out there in corporate America and corporate Japan where things were just not um, panning out in the way that I had hoped maybe they would, but then there was another opportunity that was better. And so Jerry and I connected in that way. Yeah, that's Jerry. Yeah. Fierce, passionate. Yes. She yeah. was so <laughs> generous with her wisdom. And Roy. Yes. A Bay Area mobile DJ and mm -hmm. music historian. Yes. With over 30 years of experience has also worked on a variety of special celebratory events for Jerry. And we all, you know, know Jerry loved music. Oh, yeah. Yes. She loved music and she loved to dance. Yes, she did. Welcome. <laughs> well, how Thank did you. your relationship evolve with Jerry? Well, um, like my wife Carmen was saying, uh, we met Jerry first at, uh, at a Black History event at uh, Channel 5, KPIX. And uh, that was the first time that we had uh, met Jerry. And just, uh, you know, a vibrant person, just a, a presence to, to behold. I mean, you know, when you were in her company, she made everyone feel special. You know, she just had that that way about her. And um, I can recall, um, I think it was probably a couple months after we had known Jerry. Um, I used to work for uh, Caltrans, um, transportation department here in the Bay Area. And I retired three years ago. and. Uh, we used to do a yearly Black History Month program. So we asked Jerry if she would mind being our uh, guest speaker for one of the events. And um, lo and behold, she accepted. She said, yes, I, I would love that. And she was just amazing. I mean, she mm -hmm. was so good and, and just, you know, just had the audience mesmerized with, with her stories and things that she shared that uh, they wanted her back the next year. That's how good she was. So she came back again the next year and just did it again. So just an amazing person and just someone that, you know, we just just grew to love so much. And, you know, she just 
had that motherly instinct and, uh, and she was just a very special person. Yeah, I, Jerry was here years ago and I did a show because she was a guest speaker. Women with wisdom speak and that was just awesome. They wanted yeah. her back here and there she is <laughs> with your friend, Dr. Barbara Cannon and, uh, and also accompanied with the a governor's wife, Lynn Waihee. Ah. So, yeah, you want her back. So, Barbara, mm -hmm. I want to come back to you. And what will you remember most about Jerry? One of the things that really uh, sort of fascinated me, and I hadn't noticed it much until I was reading more about her background after she died. And whenever she encountered something new, she would talk about how it changed her life. And it really... At first, when I saw that, you know, I thought, well, a lot of people say that, but she was, she meant that literally. She meant that she would make changes in her life based on new information that she brought in. And mm -hmm. she was keeping that learning going for a, a whole lifetime. And one of the last public appearances she did, when she talked about the fact that she was thinking about becoming a professional photographer after she had come back from Japan with all these photographs. And I, and like I said, I didn't know her exact age until she died, but I'm assuming now that I know she was 96, that she was probably 92 when she made that statement that she was getting ready to become a professional photographer. I mm -hmm. love that though, because the society especially for women and especially for black women, tries to put us into little boxes where they want us to stay forever. And as I said earlier, you know, my parents had no money to send me to college. I, I went because I got a scholarship, but I didn't know that early on. So there were the options that were available to me without a college education as a black girl in Tennessee during segregation made I, I was aspiring to be a secretary. That was a high goal because I did not know any black woman in Knoxville, Tennessee, who was a secretary to anybody. But I thought maybe I can learn to type and take shorthand and I can be a secretary. But really maid, housekeeper, um, you know, there really weren't that many options if you did not have a, a, a college education, on a, you know, a, even a high school education, sometimes you couldn't get much. So I looked at her and I thought, isn't it wonderful that she can come out of that box that they put us in, especially the one that they put us in for age. And she can say, I'm going to become a professional photographer at the age of 92. I mean, you know, and to have that as a goal, whether she did it or not, is not the most important thing, but to think in those terms and to work and live your life in those terms that mm -hmm. uh, anything you do. And, and she talked about, you know, how when she got a chance to go to college, that's one thing that I really identified with. She didn't know that she was going to get to go at first. And she said how education changed her life and meeting certain people that she talked to changed her life. So every time she'd have a change, she'd add something new that just enhanced her life. And I, I that's what I'll remember most about her. Oh, uh, you know, Jerry was so generous with her wisdom. This is what I admired about her. And she was just, as my husband said, school is never out. So age yeah. is just a number to her. And, and so Dee, how did Jerry inspire you? Wow. When we first had our conversation um, at an event, she just really took to me and she asked me, what are you doing? And I told her about Linda Hand. And then I also told her I was trying to write this book. She said, what do you mean you're trying to write it? I say, I am. I put it, I picked it up. I put it down. I picked it up. I put it down. I think I'm in my second year of putting it down. She said, oh, no, you have to write. You have to tell your story. And I, I don't care how many times I would say, well, Jerry, I don't know where to start. She said, that's OK. Meet me at my house on Alice Street and I'm going to show you what to do. I got there. She had some music for me. And Carmen, you're going to have to help me with the, the gentleman's name. Yeah, Andre Gagnon. Thank you. Right. And she said, I want you to take this home. And I want you to listen to this, relax, get in a quiet place, and trust me, you're going to write. And I did that. And I was amazed. And I was my quiet time. And the music just really seemed like it just touched my soul. And I just started writing. And I wrote, and she edited, it, and I wrote, and she <laughs> edited, it, and we went, that went on for a pretty good while until I came up with a finished product. 
She was there for the book signing and she was just such a joy, so much wisdom, encouragement. I don't care because trust me, I've kept putting it down because it was a lot to tell. And, you know, uh, growing up, poverty, just all the challenges that I had faced. So every time I start writing, I'd have to relive those times. And she kept saying, just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. It's going to be okay. Because this is what God wants you to do. So oh. that's that's it. Mm -hmm. She's a motivator. Yeah, she She's was. She's a motivator. Carmen. Yes. yes. What would you like people to know about the important work that Jerry did? You know, I would like them to know that Jerry worked for everyone. She didn't go out and do a job uh, to, to earn money. Jerry didn't do a job um, because it was prestigious. Jerry did a job because she had, like Dee said, a story to tell. And she had a vision for what life could be like, like Barbara said, um, what life could be like for people. Um, yeah, she basically um, just kind of let the world know that she was there to create a purpose, to create a drive, to create a force for people. Um, her work was all about peace, really, mm -hmm. about bringing peace to the world, um, about inspiring women especially to know that they have power, that they are great, that you're beautiful no matter who you are and that you're intelligent and that there is so much out there to do, to learn. Um, Jerry used to say um, in, her, in her work that if you're bored with what you're doing, then you're obviously a, a boring person mm -hmm. because there's just too much out there. there there's yeah. just so many things that we can be involved in. So one of the things that I think that was most important about Jerry's work is how she loved people, how she brought people together, how she um, wanted to share her friends. You know, lots of times people want to hold their friends for themselves. No, you can't be a friend of that person because that's my friend. But these lovely ladies here are friends of mine because of Jerry mm -hmm. and so many more. So her work was all about peace, about integrity and passion commitment. Um, she just strived for not perfection, but for realistic improvement of lives. And um, she just has touched me. Um, she's changed me for life. And I am just so grateful. Yeah, I am too. And, and as our sister part views, you know, will note, we're all wearing Jerry's favorite color, red. Yeah. You know, yes. she just had a heart of gold. Yeah. Uh, always giving and, and Roy, I'm going to come to you and mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you what are the most important lessons you learned from Jerry? Mm, wow, that's a very, very interesting and deep question, but um, I'd have to say um, number one would be uh, value, value yourself for who you are and mm -hmm. uh, you know, treating others the way you want to be treated. Uh, those were two big things that I think that, you know, I really picked up and learned from Jerry. And, uh, you know, just moving forward in life, those are values that you just have to carry. And, and you know, learning those from someone as powerful as she was and all the things that she went through in her life, those to me were very, very valuable lessons. And so I think that, um, you know, I will use those and pass those along just as she passed them to me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm loving this. And I, I just, we don't have enough time. We're going to have to do a part two and three. Yes. I wonder, I'd love it, Jerry. But <laughs> yeah. thank you, Carmen and Roy, thank Barbara you. and Dee for your wisdom. And in closing, I, I want to leave everyone with uh, something very special that Jerry um, put in her book here, the magic, the power and magic and imagination of, of media. In closing, Jerry Lands will leave you with this. Dare to dream. Mm. Then having dream, fulfill that dream at all costs. 
For without a dream, you cannot move one inch. Mm. With it, you can reach the star. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Thank you for tuning in. Aloha.